Hi everybody, welcome back to episode two on airbrushing for the beginner. So you're eager to find out what's happening in this one. First off, a radio. Now I would recommend in your studio or wherever you are learning to paint, buy yourself a radio because you do not want this complete and utter silence. You can overthink when you're in a complete empty quiet room. I always like to have a radio blasting out, pick a genre, digital radio, you can get a variety of tunes, pick the music that you like and have that in the background because music is relaxing and it calms you down. And I always have music going when I'm airbrushing. It's just something just hop on in the background and it just sort of makes the ambience of your room a lot more better for working in. So I recommend grabbing yourself a radio, chuck it in the corner, put some tunes on, and then you can get into what you're doing. And it'll make your painting just more comfortable to do. So that's the first thing. Now back onto the brush. So hopefully you've watched episode one. I took you through some basic bits on a little bit about the brush, <clears throat> air pressure, hooking the brush up. We've done a little bit on paint mixing, just, just a little teeny bit on mixing some paint up. Now today's video is going to be a little bit more on mixing, more about the brush, how to hold the brush when you're painting, and then we'll move on to a couple of exercises to practice on a easel with some paper. So the main thing when you're doing airbrushing is it's all about this guys. Now you can forget all this for a minute. You've got to master this. Holding it, cleaning it, everything about this brush you've got to know the ins and outs about and that's I'd say the main first thing that you need to learn is you need to know how this brush works because this is going to be in your hand for hours upon hours and there's nothing worse when you're a beginner you grab your brush <clears throat> yes it's all working when you get it out of the box you're painting for a few days and all of a sudden your brush don't work and it's all sticking there's problems so master the stripping down of the brush your own brush, get to grips with it, find out how everything works on it. So when you're painting and you come across a problem, you can go straight to that brush go, yeah. And it's like riding a bike, you know how to do it. <clears throat> so mastering this, first and foremost, all these little bits and other bits come later on. So you've got the Revolution, or you might have another brush, but I'm basing this off the Revolution. So we used it yesterday for a bit of painting. Now I give it a quick blast through with water. It looks nice and clean here. It was spraying through fine. But now I'm gonna show you a little deeper look into the maintenance. So take the back of your brush off, undo the chalk, slide the needle out. And as you can see there, in fact, if I hold this up to it, you'll see it a little bit clearer. The actual needle is covered in paint. So it may be spraying right, but the actual needle's covered in paint. So the first thing you need to do is clean your needle. Paper towel. Now I have got cleaning videos on the channel, but it's always good to run back over this because this is key to airbrushing. It really is, is a clean brush. If you've not got a clean brush, you're not gonna have clean work. So pinch your needle with some cleaner on, slide it through like that, and twist as you go along to the front. Be careful not to stab yourself. I've done it where I've done this, and then the needle's been sticking out my hand, and it's not very nice. So clean your needle like that, twist in as you do it and that's what I mean by a dirty needle and keeping it clean it's first and foremost guys always so nice 
clean needle. The back bit is just a wipe over. We've got some cleaner on there, so you just wipe the back part of your brush like that. So that's clean. The cap, wipe over again. You probably have a little bit of paint on the inside of that cap. Little wipe out with some cleaner. Job done. That bit's done. Now moving to the front of the brush. <clears throat> You've got the crown cap, which is the first piece you can unscrew off your airbrush. That's the first piece that comes off. So put that to one side. Then you've got the next part of the airbrush here. This piece unscrews as well. So undo that piece. You can take that piece off. You can clean them two pieces. You can soak them two pieces in a cleaner and clean them through. And then you get to this part of the brush there where you can see the actual nozzle on the brush. Now, if you've got the eye water, you can get a little spanner in the box. Very, very carefully, locate the needle, the nozzle, and undo that. Now these pieces are really small, so I'd advise getting a piece of black card or white card, put that in front of you so you can put your pieces onto some paper and you can see them when you're taking them apart. Now that nozzle there is really, really small, so put that to one side. So now you've got your brush and it's looking like that, where you can look through the hole at the front. The back of the brush here, you can move that back. This is on a spring. Move that back and you can take the actual trigger out. And that will spring forward again. You've got a little piece in there, that little bar there, that moves when you do that. So we're not gonna to touch that for the minute. Just leave that as it is now. That's sprung back, that's not going anywhere. So put your brush to one side. On the trigger of this, you can see there is a bit of built up paint, a bit of blue paint on that trigger. So we're gonna clean that. A Little bit of cleaner again, thinners, or your airbrush cleaner will work fine for this. And just give that trigger a little wipe off. So that's cleaned that. And that did have some paint on it. So that's that bit, clean. Go back to your brush, get some cleaner. I'm putting my finger over the front to stop it going through. And all I'm gonna do is get a cotton board, just clean inside the cup, let that run through, like that. Wipe through any excess. And looking through that brush now at the hole at the front, that's nice and clean between there and there. You can get the little pipe cleaners. I've not got one to hand here. You can get the little dentist brushes. I've done other videos on cleaning, as I say, that are in depth. I don't want to go too in depth on cleaning today because we've got to move on and get you progressing. But cleaning your brush is key to airbrushing. Mastering on how you strip it down, absolute key. There's nothing worse, as I say, painting and then you don't know how to strip your brush down. So we can move that chuck back and then we can relocate the needle, the trigger. So you'd slide that in the top and this will sort of just drop down. It'll find its location and it's dropped down. Release that at the back and that's your trigger back in. Like that. Your nozzle to the front, you can clean this, but be really careful because you've got a little tiny like washer just near that thread. I'm just gonna relocate this back. And these are really small. You can get the little spanners that, I've got the spanner that you get in the box, but you can get one where it fits over the front which are a lot easier to use when you're cleaning. But the spanner that comes in the box, it works. Just be very careful and treat these very delicately on the front. You've not got to go torquing this down with a torque wrench to a silly amount of 
at all. You're just literally just nipping that up until you feel it bite and that is good enough. So I put the front of that on like that. This you've cleaned, say. So that's the next part of the brush. You drop that on, screw that on, and just, as I say, don't over tighten. You just feel it nip up. That's that piece. Then you can get your crown cap. You can screw your crown cap back on like that. Job done, so that's the front of the brush on. Get your eyewater super lube you get in the box. Drop a little bit on the back of that trigger. Like that. Then get a little bit on your needle. I always put a little bit on the needle. And then just pinch and work that across your needle. Like that. Locate your needle back into the brush. Locate that needle back in. There you go, that's gone back in now. And that you'll feel that needle be a lot smoother when you put the Arwata Super Loop on the back of it. It just glides in. As I say in the first episode, don't press your needle and push it to the front. You've just got to put a little bit of tension. I always tend to go that finger like that. Just feel it touch the front. Get your thumb and your other finger and just keep that pressure, not too much, and then tighten your chuck up like that. And now that's located. The trigger is nice and smooth because you put a little bit of the super loop on the back. So that's moving nice and smooth. Put your body, I would put some on the thread as well. I'd just drop a little bit on that thread. Because sometimes on these revolutions, you can hear it sort of like a bit grindy on that thread. Slide that on the back and just work that super lube in on that thread. And it'll make it easy when you come to strip your brush down. Next time, it just locates and feels smoother. So your brush is good to go. And always check this before you start airbrushing. There's nothing worse than you've spent three or four hours and you're on your piece of artwork you, you've left it at a certain place, you've gave your brush a quick clean through, it's sat there overnight <clears throat> with the warm temperatures of the UK at the minute, you've got some paint in there and it's dried up. The next day you get in, you get in front of your easel, you, you get all hooked up like this, you're itching to go and you go wallop and it splatters dirty paint out the brush straight onto your piece of work and then you wipe it and you smear it always check this first before you start painting or go back to your piece of artwork clean your brush just do a look another double check on your brush make sure it's nice and clean and drop a bit of cleaner in blast through blast through with water and that's running nice and clean. Hold it up to some paper when you've got your water in and just blast onto the paper and you'll see if you've got water coming through and it's clean, you've got a nice clean brush when you're blasting onto white paper. So that's your brush, clean. A little bit of maintenance for you so you know how to strip your brush down, the one that you've got. I have got videos on the channel of stripping brushes down mainly all the eyewaters, the creoses, so you can nip over and look at them if, you, if you're wondering on how to strip some of these brushes down. They are all on the channel, guys, so I don't want to run through too much cleaning with you. So that is, first and foremost, a clean brush. Keep your brush clean, always. Know exactly how to strip your brush down, so when you're painting as a beginner, you know exactly how to strip it down. You can just stop, strip your brush down, clean it, and you're working again. You're not going onto a forum going, oh, I've just started painting and, I, and I, this has happened and that's happened, it's just stressful. Learn that, master that, and you'll be fine. So that's that bit on cleaning. We'll move on to holding your brush. Now, whether you're left or right handed, I'm a lefty. <clears throat> So I instantly pick the brush up sort of like this. If you're right-handed, this feels alien to me. You'll be picking it up like this. Now, when you hold the brush, you'll sort of put it 
like this and you'll have your fingers, you have your main finger here which will go to your trigger and then you'll sort of grab the brush here. Now when you're hooked up to the airline, that gives you something sort of to grip. You will be resting that part of the body over your hand here and this finger sits on the top. So I tend to, some people say you arc it over like this and rock. For me, you will know exactly how you'll want to hold your brush. People say hold it like this, rock your finger over there because it's less movement going back on the trigger and bend your finger. Just pick your brush up and instantly put your finger to the top of the trigger and start moving back and, and have a little feel and think, well, yeah, that's comfortable for me. That position is comfortable for me where I'm sitting with my finger slightly bang on top of the trigger and I've got my finger here tucked into the body. So the movement for me is here, very, very slight, and I can get really accurate trigger control that way. Some people curve their finger over it and say, well, I've been taught by so-and-so, this is the best way to airbrush. Maybe it is for them. Maybe it is for that person that's got, we've all got different hand sizes, guys. We've all got different fingers. We can't go, well, he puts his finger over the trigger like this. I must do that. Well, you can't. You've got to find your comfortable sweet spot on your trigger that works for you. And you'll instantly find that when you put your hand on the brush and you put your finger on that trigger and you start to move it how you want to move it and learn your way. Find your comfortable sweet spot first, stick to that position because there's nothing worse than painting one day a certain way and then, oh, I'm gonna try this way, oh, I'm gonna try that. Stick to one way and you'll get comfortable and you'll get that memory of picking your brush up and working that way. As I say, I sort of sit with this part of the flat part of my finger there, onto the top, I lock that part of my finger to the body, and that stops the movement for me, moving my finger back like this. Just lock my finger into the back of the body, finger on the top, and I can get accurate trigger control that way. So find your comfortable sweet spot, Always use your other hand as well, because if you pick your brush up now and you go like this, this feels sort of floaty. It feels unsteady, especially if you're painting, it just feels unsteady. Now, if you bring your other hand across and hold your other hand and pivot from your waist, so you can lock your arm in position like that, and you can pivot from your waist, you can move backwards and forwards from your core, instead of being like this, and it just feels a little bit too loose and a little bit too freehand. If you steady it with your other hand, you can guide more, and it just gives you that little bit more control and stability with your brush. You'll see this later on when I do the exercises on how it is. So, First off, holding your brush, get your finger on the trigger and get comfortable holding it. Just spend four or five minutes just thinking, well, yeah, holding your brush, looking at it as you're gonna be painting on a flat surface, sort of look round it, get comfortable where you can see what you're doing so it feels comfortable because you're gonna have this thing in your hand for a lot of time, a lot of hours. And there's nothing worse than holding it uncomfortably you will get cramp in your hand, I guarantee, as a beginner. Your finger will kill you after an hour. You'll get sore spots on your finger here because you're pressing too hard. We all do it. You tend to clutch hold of the brush as though it's like you're hanging onto a cliff and you don't want to die. You're like hanging onto it and you're pressing down too hard. You're all stiff and it's the worst thing. Airbrushing is a soft, fluent movement. The softer and fluent more movement you can do with airbrushing, the better, the better your work will be. The more rigid and 
stressed you are, it will show in your lines on your work, the way you're painting, you'll see it in your paint when you're painting, if you're all rigid and too rigid with the brush, you've got to relax. And that's why I say music for one, drop that in the background, nice, chilled out, relax. You've not got to be all stressed and tight and oh no, I've got to paint this and you overthinking it. Just chill out. Just think of it as though you've got a pen or a pencil in your hand and you're just doodling. That's all it is, but you're off the paper. So that's my little bit on holding the brush, nice and simple. Master that, give that five, 10 minutes in your hand, have a little doodle with the brush, fit, get it how it feels, get comfortable with it, master how to strip it down, put it back together and clean it. So you've got no problems there as you're working. If it clogs up, you know exactly what you're doing. So we'll move on to the next piece and we're gonna move back onto paint now. I mentioned in the first one, episode one, we've got some artist acrylics. I've got a couple more of these now. We mixed the black one yesterday. Now, as a beginner, <clears throat> this is absolutely fine to use. I've even used this on pieces of artwork like automotive, and it has been absolutely fine. I painted the e-bike in a lot of colors that were like this. It's acrylic at the end of the day. It works like the golden airbrush acrylic. So it is absolutely fine to use. So we mix some of the black. Now I'm gonna run over some of the mixing again. Now, to get that consistency of light milk, full fat or semi-skimmed, you're looking at 50-50. With the air pressures that we were using in yesterday's episode, like 25 to 30 PSI, absolutely fine with that brush, it flows brilliantly. Now, if you want to get a bit more intricate with your mixing, so you get it bang on every time, you can pick up a cheap pair of digital scales. They're not expensive, if these still work, yeah, they do. So you can do your little pot on the top, tear that, nice and easy. Get your paint, drop a bit of your paint in. That sounded great, didn't it? <laughs> if Dean's watching, he's cracking up now. So, you've got a bit of paint in there, and that is, let's have a look. 26.5. We'll tear that. So then drop your water in and drop the same amount. Twenty-six point five on water. Give that a mix. And that is a fifty fifty. Now with this paint as it's thick and dense, that on a fifty fifty is quite thick when you look at it. because it's artist acrylic. So that is thick in there. That's quite thick. So drop that back on these scales and I'm gonna go for, that was 26.5. So let's drop another 10 in there. Mix that up. And this is what I'm saying about the artist acrylic. It will make you a lot of paint. We're getting there, that's still thick. So we're gonna drop another 10 in. Now we're getting to a consistency that's good. That's better. So you're aiming for that milk type consistency. So we're about there on that. So you can use scales 
if you want to get it more sort of accurate and you're decanting it into little bottles you can use scales but if you aim for consistency of semi skimmed full fat milk with a 0 0.5 You'll be absolutely fine, you'll be good to go. You will know, I'll show you in a minute on the paper on how paint atomizes and you'll see a thick paint versus a thin paint, you'll see it instantly and what it does. If you've got too much of a thick paint, when you spray it, it will be grainy and it'll like spit and you'll see on your dot pattern, it'll be a little bit grainy and speckly. But when you get your paint consistency sort of right, you get a nice soft mist on that circular spray dot pattern. It'll mist out nice, it'll fade out nice. If you've got it too thin with the air pressure that we're actually running 25 to 30, and it's too thin, when you spray it, it will hit the paper, it'll be way too thin, and just sort of spray it out, and you'll get like a, a build up and it'll spray out. So getting your paint right is key. It's not hard to do. Just get that consistency like full fat milk to semi skim milk, you're in the sweet spot, you're good to go. So we've got a little bit of paint mixed, nice and easy. I'll set the easel up and we'll run through some little bits on the easel. Right guys, we've got the easel set up. Now, I'm gonna give you some absolute basic things to try with your airbrush when you've got your painting. Now, get yourself a piece of kitchen towel because it's quite absorbent. You've got your black paint mixed. Hopefully you've got it mixed to the consistency of milk. We're running 25 to 30 PSI. Hold your piece of kitchen towel and just give it a little move back on the trigger and you will see your paint coming out. So, spraying nice, going down on that really nice. So you know you've got paint coming out of the brush. Now, the first thing that you've got to master is this. You have to master the trigger. Now, it can feel really alien when you pick an airbrush up because your mind tells you to do other things. Because you're concentrating, you're looking at the paper and you're concentrating on and sort of hovering over the paper and concentrate thinking, right, the paint, I need to go down for air. And it's that movement of that and back, your brain can't, it's like the hand-eye coordination and riding a bike when you're a kid. You get on it, you know you've got a pedal, so that's one thing that your brain's telling you you've got to do. And then you've got to steer at the same time. And that's why when you're a kid and you're on a push bike, you tend to go in a straight line and fall off because you're not getting the movement and consistency of doing that and that at the same time. It's doing them two things at once that confuses your brain. But this is what I mean by practice and practice and practice. You have to master this. Key to airbrushing is mastering this trigger control. Once you've got your trigger control dialed in and mastered, the rest of it becomes very, very easy and you pick it up really really quick so mastering trigger control so pick your brush up get comfortable find your sweet spot again so you know where you're pressing down you've got your finger on the top so you know you've got to press down for air that's one thing remember that down for air right i need to go down for air press down for air then you're moving back with your finger and that releases the paint like we showed in episode one where i put water in it and I said, just master with the water, looking up against them, and you can see how much is coming out of the brush. So, down for air, the best thing to practice first is dots. Just do rows and rows and rows of dots. So, down for air, keep your distance, I would say, around three to four inches off your panel. As a beginner, practicing first. So, down for air, and start to move back the paint and you get a dot. Now the more you move back, if you go full back now, you're gonna get that and you're gonna get a build up. See how wet that is on the panel? That's because you've gone all the way back on the trigger and it is splattered a load of paint and that is gonna to start to run. It'll start running down. So you're aiming for that, the nice soft dot where it's not got too much build up. It's just a nice consistent dot. It's dried, 
it's fine. It's nice, soft all around the edges. That is overkill and it's gonna run and you don't want that on your panel that you're working on. So you've got to press down and start to move your finger back and just look at your piece of paper. Move back until you see the paint coming out. A little bit more and stop. And that's drying back. So down, start to move back. You get your dot. Down, move back and then move forward. And what you've got to master with this double action is where you're going down and it gives your air, you move back for paint. When you move back for paint, you've got to keep the air on. And this is what I mean by mastering it. You've got to keep your air on, move back to get your paint, keep your air on, and then to get your paint to come off, you move forward, but keep the air on. So you basically just keep your finger down, Remember to keep your finger down on the air, move it back, move it forward, move it back, move it forward. And it's mastering that. And that can be very hard to master at a start because it's them two movements in one and learning to go forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. If you can just sit there at home with the brush in your hand, no paint in it, not linked up to an airline and just think, and just look at it and go down, back, and just start getting that. Even if you're sitting there at night time with the brush in your hand going like this, down, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. It's remembering and getting that muscle memory in your finger. So down for air, back for paint, back for paint, keep your air on, move it forward, and you get dots. And the more you move back, the bigger these dots will be. That's about full size out of this brush you will get. So you're getting sort of a two inch dot. Mist it out. This paint is quite thin on this paper. But that's how you'll get your dots down. So practicing dots is key because dots come into artwork. And as you can see, the rocking on that trigger, the air is still on and that trigger is just rocking back and forward to get a dot like that. So mastering dots is key because it's trigger control and you have to master trigger control in airbrushing. Mastering that, you will be flying. Once you learn that part of it, all the rest of it will come very, very quickly and you will pick up on these episodes that I'm going to be doing, you'll, you'll progress really, really quick. It's not a problem at all. So we've gone down for air, back for paint, down for air, back for paint, like that. Back for paint, back for paint, and you're creating a dot. Now, if you want to do a line, you're going to go down for air, back for paint, and when you go back for paint, you'll see the dot, move, and that's your line. Now you'll probably get a build up there and you'll probably get a build up there because you're doing something now where you're going down, back, and you're moving. So it's like, oh my God, I'm going down, back, moving, line, oh. And it can be like all this for a start and it's frustrating and you want to put the brush down or throw it across the room so it bounces off the wall or you put it back in the box and you never pick it up again. You have to master this, guys, you really do. These are the basic foundation of airbrushing. So calm, sticky music on, chill out, walk away for five minutes, come back, pick your brush up and go again. So down for air, back for paint and move. This is what I'm saying about being fluent. Don't get rigid and all tight. Relax your shoulders, down for air, back for paint and bring your line in like this. So you're nice and relaxed and you're dropping your lines in. And you're aiming to go point to point. That will come, you get a nice soft point, you get a nice soft point. And this is what I mean by trigger control. When you're moving, you're bringing your air on air up. We'll start it from the board here. So you're coming off the board, air. When you come onto your board and hit the paper, bring the trigger back, take the trigger forward, keep your air on, like that and you're going point, point. So off side of this board, air on, paint, 
paint off, you've got your air on here. Going that way, air, paint, paint off, and you've got your air on. It's the same when you are, if you're a spray painter, and you're coming into this, you'll know exactly what I mean if you're a spray painter with a big spray gun. When you're painting a panel, you know when to take the trigger off, put the trigger on, take the trigger off, put the trigger on. It's that memory of the feather off, feather on, feather off, feather on. You're doing the same sort of thing, but you're doing it with a brush in your hand. You're putting your air on, air coming onto your panel, paint, paint off, Keep your air on as, you, as you're going past. And that's how you'll get a line. Your lines at the start will be wavy, they'll be big, they'll be blowing out with paint. They'll be thick, they'll be like really light, transparent. It's air, paint, paint off air. And you'll start to get, the more and more of these that you do, the better you'll get at them. The more consistent lines you will get. You want a thick line, you know you've got to put more paint back. You know you've got to pull more back on that trigger to get more paint down and a thicker line. You work on distances, so you want a real tight, crisp line. It's minimal trigger movement going back, same air pressure, but you're going closer to the panel to get that smaller line that more finer line. It's less movement on this going back, closer to the paper, and you're getting that real fine line. So as I say, you've got to master that trigger. You really have, you've got to master that trigger, and then the rest will come into play. Pressures, you get your paint consistent set. If you keep your paint at that consistent set, you'll be fine. Then you've got to stop moving on to your pressures, but we'll move on to these in the next episodes, master your dots, your lines, just do stacks and stacks of paper with dots and lines, dots and lines. It's getting that memory in your head of that trigger, moving it back, down, back, down, back, down, back. It's just that mastering it, guys. You can't jump on a bike as a child and ride it straight away. You fall off it so many times. You get knocked, grazes, but you get back on and you keep, you progress, you progress. And that's what it's about. Dots and lines is key. There are more techniques, but they're the basic ones. Master them. I will see you in the next episode when I'll give you some more little exercises to do. And remember, You've finished airbrushing, you've done your dots and lines, you've got paint in your brush. Always clean it before you pack away. So empty your paint back into your container. Blast through again with water. Like that. Give the cup a clean. Couple of blast throughs. Like that. If you are flying out and you're really, really busy and you think, oh, I've not got time, give it a quick blast through with water. Drop water in your cup, like that. Put your lid on with water in, and you can leave water just soaking in your brush with the airbrush. If you've got a little bit of acrylic in there, leave your water in the brush so it doesn't dry when you've got neat paint. You can do that overnight, not a problem, or airbrush clean up, just drop it in the front. Put it on an actual airbrush holder so it's pointing down. Don't stick water in it and lay your brush down on the side of the table because it will run back up in here and choke the brush up. So stick it in your airbrush holder like that with water in and you'll be good to go for the next episode and we'll start off the next episode as it is now set up and then we'll run through a little bit of cleaning again and move on to the next pieces of practicing panels. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Don't forget if you're new to the channel and you're liking the content, click that subscribe, press that notification and a big shout out to the new subscribers that have come across and a big thumbs up to all the regulars and the comments guys. It's much appreciated, it really is. So I hope you've learned something today and I hope you can join me in episode three. 
Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.